Welcome one more time to our lesson preview. This is the last lesson of our quarter, the last lesson of our year, and uh, the last lesson, of course, of 2020. This has been a very difficult year for many people and for most of us uh, around the world. So um, it is great that we can enjoy this uh, uh, time to check out this lesson and also to watch this um, preview. I want to wish a Merry Christmas to all those who are watching uh, this week. And hopefully, hopefully, 2020 is going to be a lot better year for us. And we can uh, have you, you guys with us throughout the entire year, the upcoming year. So let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for um, all the lessons that we have learned throughout the year. Uh, because we know that it's not only one lesson a week, it's a lesson after lesson, many lessons uh, throughout the week, and sometimes more than one uh, during uh, our daily study. So as we move on and as, as we start with this lesson preview, we ask you, O oh Lord, that you, through your Holy Spirit, may give us insight, may give us uh, wisdom so we can... Um, recall the things that we have uh, learned throughout the quarter, and especially what we have to learn for this coming week. Thank you, Father, for being with us throughout the year, and thank you for the promise to being, uh, of being with us forever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So the title of our lesson for this uh, coming week is Heaven, Education, and Eternal Learning. So as we have been studying throughout the quarter, um, Education is a lifelong activity. It's not something that we do in our uh, early years when we are uh, kids and, 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 and teenagers and probably when we go to college, if we had the chance and, 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 and we stop there. No, education continues um, until we die. We never stop learning. We never stop um, getting new things. Uh, and, and learning about new things. I, I remember 24 years, almost 25 years ago, when I was uh, in a certain church, um, and one of uh, the elders was outside the temple. And, and for some reason, I had to go out and, and come back, and I saw him being outside. When I came back, he was still there. So I asked him, hey, why you're not inside? Um, and he said, well, there's nothing else. I need to learn. I know everything. And I have heard all the sermons that can be uh, preached. So no need to be inside. So then I, I, I start wondering, is that true? Is that possible? So can we overwhelm the, 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 the teachings of the Bible? So if, if we think that a um, hundred years that we might live, 70 years, 80 years, a hundred years that we might live, it's enough to know everything about God, then God is not God. If we think that 2,000 years that have been since Jesus lived on this earth is enough to know about him and to know him everything and to know everything about him, then he's not God. Because if we think a little bit about God, it, it, there's no way to measure him out. There's no way to, to, to learn everything about him in, in, in a limited time. And we're talking about 100 years, we're talking about a, a thousand years, we're talking about 2,000 years, even the 6,000 years approximately that, that uh, is the age of the earth, it's not enough to learn everything about God. So learning is a lifelong activity. So in the lesson for this week, we have uh, two things that we need to remark. And the first thing is that the promise of a new life and the things that are going to happen before then, and then the pro the, living the promise, living the new life. So starting with the promise of a new life, we have um, before the resurrection. What do we do? Of course, we're talking about before dying, because nothing is going to happen after we die. But before dying, there's a lot of things that we need to learn. Learn about God, learn about life, learn about even eternity. There's not much that we can learn about eternity because eternity is a very complex um, concept. For example, if I, if I can draw a line, um, let's pretend 
that this line represents eternity. And we came up to, to live a certain point, for example, here. We did not live this part of eternity. We are going to live, according to the promise of the Bible, this part of eternity. So that's why when people talk about that we are going to have eternal life, that's a, a, a very deep concept because we haven't lived the, the, the first part of eternity. I mean, eternity is something that has no beginning and has no end. So that's why when we come at a certain point in life and we are going to have eternal life in heaven, according to most of our Christian claim, we're not living eternal life. We are going to live the rest of eternity, yes, but that's an immortal life. It's not eternal life. But having that said, then we have the, the promise of the resurrection. Remember that John 3, 16, probably the most famous uh, verse in the Bible, says that um, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so for whosoever believes in him do not perish, but have eternal life. That's where the concept of eternal life starts. Have eternal life. So there is a, a, a promise here. A promise that there will be a life after this life that we are living now. After the life that everybody until today has lived and, 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 and those who have uh, died will come to resurrection. They will be resurrected and will come to life again. There's a promise. Even Jude 20 and 21 says that these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. So there is a promise before these things happen. But the promise is not for us to be just uh, expecting that we are going to receive in, in an automatic, uh, automatic way eternal life or immortal life, whatever, whatever the way we want to call it. They, they, there's not such thing that because we are going to die, then in the day of the resurrection, we are going to receive eternal life. No, that doesn't happen in, in an automatic way. It happens through Jesus Christ. If we accept him, accept him as a, our savior, and if we give him our life, because the, the, the immortal or eternal life is going to be given to those who believe in Jesus in exchange for this earthly life. So if you want to live eternal life or you want to be the rest of eternity with Jesus Christ, you must give your life to, give to him in order to receive the eternal life that he is promising. So before the resurrection, there is the promise and there is the expectation. Uh, for example, 1 Peter uh, 3.13 says that we are, according to the promise, says him, uh, expecting the new heaven and the new earth. And that's, that's a new life that is going to be given to those who believe in the moment or in the morning of the resurrection. According to 1 Thessalonians 4.17, that's a very popular um, um, verse for those who believe in resurrection and in new life, says that those who uh, die believing in Jesus Christ will be resurrected to eternal life. So the promise of a new life is in the Bible. There's a bunch of texts that we can review and, 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 and learn about this coming life after this earthly life, and before the resurrection, before the morning of the resurrection, there's many things that we have to do. First of all, whosoever believes in him. The, the, the promise is there. The, 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 the promise of eternal life is there. But it's for that who believes in Jesus Christ. The resurrection is going to happen according to the Bible. Resurrection is going to happen when Jesus comes on the clouds of, of heaven for a second time to this world, in the second coming, the resurrection will happen. According to 1 Thessalonians uh, 4.17, uh, 4, as, as I mentioned, God, will, God, the Lord himself, will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The promise is there. 
and he will do it because he doesn't change and because he always fulfills his promises. So the resurrection will happen. According to uh, John 5, 28, do not marvel at this, but for an hour, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and will come forth those who did the good deeds to a resurrection of life, those who committed evil deeds to a resurrection of judgment. So uh, along with the promise of a new life, there's a, a this thing of the, the promise of the resurrection. All the people that has died until today is going to, to uh, resurrect, is going to be raised to, to, to life. Some, according to John, for, for uh, eternal life, according to their deeds, and some are going to be resurrected for judgment. So uh, that's, that's when, when I said that the new life is given to those who give up their lives on this earth. So the second thing that we need to review in this uh, lesson is living the new life. And here is where uh, this important lesson comes in. Because um, for those who think that uh, education is only for, for this life, this earthly life, then let me tell you, I'm sorry to say that, but you guys are wrong. For those who believe that education ends with the death, then you're wrong. Because... Um, like I said in the beginning, I don't know how many years we're going to live, but it could be 70, 80, 90, 100 years. Some people live up to 100 years and a little bit more sometimes. It's not enough to know God. We know something about God. We know him maybe in a, in a relationship, in a personal uh, uh, way that we have a, a personal relationship with him. But we don't know everything about him. And knowing everything about him will take eternity. It will take an eternal life because he is eternal. And then it will take, as long as he lives, it will take for us to learn everything about him. And I'm going to say this. Probably we never, we're going to stop learning about him. Because he has been around from eternity. Okay, so living the new life. The first thing that we need to remember is the millennium. Do you, do you, do you know that um, there are some people that do not believe in the millennium? And there are some that believe that the, that the thousand years or, or the millennium, as the Bible presents it, uh, is going to happen here on earth. It doesn't matter where it's going to happen. The thing is that the Bible uh, already presents that the new life is going to be different to this life. I, I remember another person I was uh, studying the Bible with, and this person told me one day that um, he didn't want to go to heaven. And I said, what? And he said, yes, I don't want to go to heaven because what are we going to do over there? There's no sports over there. There's no music like we have here. There's no theaters. And I was amazed when he was speaking because he didn't know what he was talking about. The problem with us many times is that we see the new life or we imagine, we envision the new life up in heaven in the same way that we see the life here on earth. Thinking that all the things that, that uh, entertain us here on earth are going to be happening up in heaven just the, without the problem of sin. According to the Apostle Paul, the things that we haven't, the, the things that haven't come up to our ears or our eyes have never seen or haven't come up to the mind of the person, of, of a person, have the ones that have, that God have in heaven stored for us. He has stored those things for us in heaven. So our imagination is not capable to grasp the things that we are going to live in heaven, the, the, the type of life that we are going to have in heaven. We have some hints on the Bible and we can probably just make us a, an idea, make for ourselves some ideas of what's going to happen in heaven. But the, the, the fact that there's some people saying that it will be boring is because they don't trust God. If God had made everything since creation, 
All the things that, that um, are presented in the Bible, the, the, the marvelous things, the wonders that he created when he created heaven and earth for uh, our happiness. He created those things for the happiness of the, of the new man and woman. Imagine the things that God has prepared for us when we are going to live with him forever. Since the very beginning, God created all things for the happiness of man. We know that sin came and, and entered into the world and destroyed that part of the plan of God. But God had a, a, a plan to save man from, 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 from his sins or from their sins. And now we can enjoy an eternal life if we give up our lives to Jesus. So according to Revelation 20, 4 and 6, um, it says that um, there will be a period of a thousand years. And we're going to spend that time just uh, knowing why some people made it to heaven and some did not. Because there will be so many questions. There will be some, some uh, surprises up in heaven. Uh, why this guy or this person made it and why the person that we were thinking that will made it, will make it, didn't make it. So those, those kind of questions will take some time. And remember, we're not talking about just the, the, the 100 people, 50 people, 200 people that, that, that attend our local church every, every week. We're talking about all the, the, the Christians since the, the early church. We're talking about 2,000 years. But then 4,000 years prior to the early, uh, early church, since the creation of Adam and Eve. All those who believed in God. Why God saved this person and why God did not save the other person. Those questions are going to be uh, answered in this period. The millennium. Plus, there will be a time of celebration. There will be a time when all the, 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 the saved will be celebrating with God. It's a new life. It's a new life. And the Bible presents it, even the book of Revelation presents it as the, as the wedding of the Lamb. The wedding of the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus Christ and, 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 the, and the bride is the church. Those who are the members of the church. Those who believed in Jesus Christ, those composed the, 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 um, composed the, the bride. Okay, so now it's time for celebration. It's the, the time of celebrating the wedding and then the honeymoon and then the, the, the beginning of a new life. But that's not eternity. A thousand years is not eternity. The eternal life comes after these thousand years. Okay, in Isaiah 65, 17, says that uh, he who has a, no, that's a, yeah, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. That, that's Revelation. Uh, Isaiah says, mm, not sure if I put that text over here. No, no, no. Um, no, I, don't, I didn't put it. But 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then I will know fully just as I also have been fully known. But Isaiah says that there is um, a new uh, heaven and a new earth. In, in Isaiah 65 uh, tells us that people in the, in the new life, the eternal life, will live some type of um, uh, different life. Different in the way things are happening right now. Not different in the way that we are going to stop being humans. No, we're not going to stop being humans. We're going to continue being humans because this is the race God created. So then we are going to build up our houses. We are going to uh, plant our, our, our uh, vineyards and our farms and everything. We're going to do that. And the, and the, and the women will continue to, to uh, uh, bear children. That's what the Isaiah says. That's what Isaiah says that is going to happen in the new life. With the difference that things are going to be um, in another way. There will be no sin. The, the child will not die. 
the, the people is not going to grow older. The people is going to enjoy the life, the, the original life that God intended for Adam and Eve. That's going to happen according to Isaiah. And, and then Paul, as I mentioned already, says that uh, the things that we, don't not, we do not understand at this point, the things that we only see kind of a reflection, the things that uh, we saw uh, right now kind of uh, dimmed, they are going to be clear, completely clear for us. And then we are going to understand what we do not understand right now. So let me tell you something. Um, according to uh, 1 Corinthians 15, it says that uh, when Jesus comes, this corruptible will be uh, dressed. That, that's the, 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 the word he uses. We will, will be covered with uncorruptible things, okay? Either the life, the body, everything. And, and, and life, the mortal life will be covered or will replace with immortal life. I already explained it that. So the thing is, many people believe that education is going to stop at the moment we die because in the new life, we are going to be perfect. Up to there, everything is fine. But remember, perfection doesn't mean omniscience. Omniscience. Okay, so we're not going to be omniscient at the moment we are going to be resurrected or at the moment we are going to be given our immortal, all eternal life. Perfection is going to be given to us, but that doesn't mean that we are going to know everything. If we want to understand this, then we have to go to the beginning, to the Garden of Eden. When Adam was created, the same day that he was created, on the sixth day of the week, he had to uh, name all the animals, okay? So the first thing that he knew was that life wasn't just an idle life. He has to work, okay? So then he has a task, and then he starts naming, na naming the animals according to their names uh, that they have now. The second thing is that he learns that he was alone, and there was no partner for him. And God wanted him to, to find that out. So then God performs a surgery in, in Adam. That happened the same day that he, he was created. And performs the surgery and extracts a rib and then creates the woman, Eve. Okay? And then later on that day, he, the, 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 the woman is introduced to Adam. And he sees it. And he falls in love. That, that was love at first sight. And then God celebrates the first wedding, the same day. The same day that God, Adam and Eve were created. So, the following days were for them to explore their new life. The life. It wasn't a new, it was the only life that, was, uh, that had existed uh, up to that moment. But they need to know God, the one who created them. So they were learning. And as the life continued, they continued to learn new things every day. Remember, just think about uh, 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 the moment when, when uh, Eve got pregnant. And then she knew that the, the, there was a new life in her womb. And then the new baby comes out. And then she learned about the life beginning from being a baby, something that she did not know because she was created by God. So they were perfect until they sinned. We know that. They were perfect until they sinned, before they, they, they had kids. But they didn't know everything because perfection is not the same thing as omniscience. So we're going to be perfect at the moment that we are giving a new life but that doesn't mean that we know everything. So con the education continues in the new life. And as I already mentioned, we are going to continue to learn about God. And there, 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 uh, there are many questions. I'm pretty sure about it. For example, we read the stories in the Bible, stories about Moses, 
stories about uh, Cain and Abel, stories about Noah, stories about any, any character from the Bible. And we want to know firsthand, told by the same characters, how things happened. How big, was the, how big was the armor that David had to wear in order to face Goliath? And then he, he, he takes it away because he said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to take this off because it's, it's too big for me. It's hindering me for, for, to, to, to display my, my capability to, to face this giant. We are going to learn because the learning is forever. Heaven is a promise that has been given to us. And God keeps his promises. He fulfills his promises. Education is going to continue in the next life that we are going to live when Jesus comes for a second time. So, um, according to the lesson, the education doesn't stop at the moment we die. But the education continues as we live. The thing is, and the, and, the, and the challenge is, are we going to stop learning because we decide to stop learning? Or are we going to renew our motives for learning? Are we going to renew our enthusiasm of, of learning new things every single day? Then let me tell you something. Just go back to the Bible. Go back to the Bible. I, I, I remember a few uh, persons that I have talked to, I'm talking about people that already died. And when I met them, they were in their 80s maybe. And, and one of them I remember, he said, well, I, 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 I had to be in the hospital for, for, for three months. And then I read the Bible three times in, that, in those three months. And I said, what? And he said, yes, I was sick and, and I had nothing to do. No TV, no nothing. Back then there were no cell phones, so he doesn't have to waste his time in, in a device. So he said, well, I need the Bible. So, so somebody brought the Bible to him and he started to read the Bible. And he said, I read it three times. And then after the, the, he came out of the hospital, he wrote a book. And then I remember uh, I met this other guy uh, and he said, well, one day I decided that I will um, uh, find some weird things in the Bible. The things that, that may um, uh, spark curiosity in people. So he came up with a book. And he said, in order for me to come up with this book, I had to read the Bible many times in one year. And I read it like four or five times. That's what he said. And then he came up with this book. So there is new things. There are new things every time we read the Bible. I personally have been reading the Bible and, and, and every time I read it again, I learn new things. And I thought that I, I, I knew many things about the first books of the Bible. Now, every time I read it, I discover new things. So my challenge for you is go back to the Bible. If you want your personal education to be something that is continuous, if you want your uh, personal education something that is preparing yourself and, and, and your loved ones for the life that is promised to us, the eternal or immortal life, then start now. Don't stop learning. Don't stop being educated. Let the Holy Spirit educate you for the upcoming life. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you prepare yourself, that you give up your life and you receive a new life in the moment Jesus comes again. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the promise, the promise of coming back to take us home. And the moment that you're going to take us home, we know that we are going to enjoy a new life. Nothing compared to what we have right now, full of sorrow, full of uh, tears, full of uh, pain and death, full of problems. A new life that you have promised that uh, there will be no sorrow or pain, no more crying, but a new life that will bring happiness, success, and enjoyment with Jesus Christ. Thank you for the promise. 
But at the same time, thank you for giving us the chance to learn because education will not stop sometime soon. It will be forever if we want to know you more. Help us to develop or, or start that feeling of wanting to know more about you every single day. So that way we prepare ourselves for the moment when we are going to see you face to face and our education will continue forever. Thank you for this wonderful lesson. Thank you for being with us throughout the year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.